This goes out to all those who don't think they can make it. Welcome back to our Sunday morning service, church. Let's clap our hands as we praise our God this morning. How many know He's worthy of the victory? See that strength will rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait. Oh, upon yes, strength the Lord. will. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We our God. Our God. You reign for it. Everlasting 
worship you God this morning. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands. Did you, did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rush to see God, Jesus Christ, the reason one. Did you feel the people tremble? Did you feel the people tremble? Did you hear the singers roar? When the lost began to see God, Jesus Christ, the saving one. this morning now let's lift up the presence of the Holy Spirit oh yes Jesus we pray for your atmosphere God and we lift up your name Jesus you are the name above all names and we're praying God Lord you would help us this morning Sweetest of loves, when my heart becomes free. 
help me sing it out. Let's invite the Holy Spirit into this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. God to meet with us. We need God to speak to us. And I believe God is going to do that today. We want to pray. Go before the Lord. Open your hearts. Open your minds. We're going to lift up uh, all that God is doing in your own lives, families, friends, people, people around you, uh, your jobs, your finances, your children. We're going to lift up all of those things. We're going to pray for our leaders this morning. Um, 
and uh, Pastor Greg, Lisa Mitchell, we're going to pray for them in Prescott. Um, there, we also want to pray for Pastor Elliot and uh, the new building renovations that they're going to begin to undertake in Beachborough and uh, extend the building out by another 500 square meters, I believe. And so I want to pray and lift them up. Uh, amen. How many have a need upon your life this morning? You can lift your hand. Amen. By faith, we're going to pray. We're going to believe God together. And uh, we're going to do that. And ask Fossey to open us up in a word of prayer. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we, we are grateful for the presence of God. Lord, that you come down, you meet with us, Lord. We're two or more gather in your name that you are there. You're in the midst of us. Uh, your presence is felt. Your presence is known. God, we, we long for it. We desire it. God, we want more. God, make us more aware, Lord. Of Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity it is to serve you. We thank you, Father God, that we can come before you this morning, Lord. We pray that you would help us here, Father God. I pray, Jesus, your anointing upon us, Lord, Father, this morning, Lord. I pray for your spirit here in this place this morning, Lord. I pray, Father God, for Pastor Greg and Lisa Mitchell and Prescott. I pray for your anointing upon them, Lord, Father, as they continue to continue to lead our fellowship, Lord Father. I pray for your anointing. Help us to submit under their leadership, Lord Father. Help them, Father God. Lord Father, they can lead this fellowship, Lord. I pray, Jesus, that you would have your hand and your, your spirit to be poured out here in this service this morning, Lord. I pray that you would help us, Father God, to be receptive to your word. I pray to you would pour your spirit. Speak to us. Open our hearts and our minds to your word, Lord Father. Help us to leave this place changed with a stone in our hearts. And I pray, pour your spirit this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. And say to them, I need God. And our blood is full of us, so walk like you're free. Blinded by the past, and the sin in me. Amen. Praise God. I want to welcome you out this morning. Glad that you're here. You can find your seats and uh, make room for each other. Amen. Squashing in for only a few more services. Don't worry. The new building is coming. And I'm believing God. I have friends in high places. And uh, Pastor Plummer messaged me, I think, yesterday. And he said, I've been praying for your new building. And I want to let you know that I feel like it's coming very soon. And so... Uh, amen. I thank God for friends and uh, people in the fellowship who pray for us, people all over the fellowship praying for us and the new building situation. So keep uh, contending for that. Uh, amen. few announcements, morning prayer in the morning, if you're able to come and pray, uh, 7 till 8 a.m. in the new building. Uh, amen. few other things. Uh, we had a great men's camp uh, just gone, weekend gone. I'll talk more about that tonight. Uh, we have a video to show tonight and some uh, maybe some testimonies, some brief testimonies. Uh, I'm going to preach uh, using the men's camp as a backdrop for that tonight. Uh, so you'll hear more about that then. Uh, this coming week is our uh, Tuesday night is our prayer night uh, here in the building. I want to encourage, uh, actually no, in the new building. Uh, we, need to, we need to keep praying in the new building until, um, uh, until Jesus comes back or we get another building after that. But amen, we want to pray in the new building. And uh, we'll have a prayer meeting there in the new building. We're going to be praying for you, your families, friends, people, building, uh, all other manner of things. Uh, but we need to be praying. Those nights are, are, are very, very good, very impacting. Often see lots of miracles and uh, God healing people, uh, God helping people in the prayer night. That's Tuesday night uh, at uh, 7 p.m., Tuesday night, 7 p.m. This week coming, uh, there's quite a lot on, on the weekend. It's Easter weekend, um, and uh, we have three uh, in particular uh, events on Friday night, Good Friday. We have a burgers and testimony night. Um, the flyers are here for those if you want to invite somebody out to that. We have a number of testimonies, some music, burgers, um, and um, if they're going to look anything like that, we won't... Uh, we won't have enough room to contain everybody that comes, and I've on, I have it on good notice that the burgers are going to be just like that. I, he I heard the burgers are better at Hurstville, so the burgers are better at the Potter's House, um, so uh, let's see what happens. Um, it's going to be a great night Friday night, uh, then Saturday we're meeting at 2 o'clock, we're going to do a street drama at 2 o'clock and some music, be very upbeat and um, uh, celebrating the resurrection of Christ. 
and uh, it is a great opportunity. People all around the world recognize Easter, and uh, you have a little more liberty than usual to preach, bring a message of hope to people, and ask you to join us. Maybe you don't normally come to outreach, street outreach. If you could be there at 2 o'clock on Saturday, meet in the center of Hurstville, and um, the usual spot there in the uh, out on the street in the corner, the I don't even know how do we refer to that these days, but the mall, walkthrough mall, the spot. People have never been there. They don't know what the spot is, but it's the walkthrough mall um, across the road from the train station. Uh, That will will help you. Uh, But we'll be there at 2 o'clock, and we'll do an outreach there. That that will be great. And then Sunday, of course, it's Easter Sunday. We have a morning service here. We've got the mind of God for that. We'll have a communion. Um, And then um, in the evening, we're going to have the cook-off. And uh, that's going to be amazing. We've got six teams. Uh, those uh, uh, teams are mostly sorted, but those teams are uh, on the flyer. Uh, six local teams, and then we've got some teams from our pioneer churches are coming, Reevesby, Auburn, and Eaglevale, and they're bringing, team, uh, bringing a, a team. So that's nine teams of food samples. Uh, you're going to roll out of this place next Sunday night uh, full of the Holy Ghost, and maybe some food as well. And so um, you can, uh, they'll come, they'll provide a sample for everybody, and then we'll have some music. We'll, have a, uh, we'll judge which group uh, provides the best cook-off, and uh, it's going to be a great night next Sunday night. Then we're looking forward to our revival with evangelist Steve Bowman uh, as a long-term evangelist, a deep, uh, uh, deeply prophetic ministry, gives words, is able to uh, really minister well. Uh, Pastor Mitchell, uh, again, has said he has one of the most prophetic ministries he has seen. Uh, everyone who has him is very encouraged and uh, really uh, speaks very, very well and very, very highly of his ministry. And so uh, we haven't had many revivals, uh, I think just two last year, and we're probably two or three this year, uh, but we're looking forward to this one. It's going to be great. Uh, amen. Amen. That's all the announcements. We want to receive an offering. Let's give the Lord a clap offering as our ushers come forward tonight, today. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. We exalt your name and we thank you for all that you're doing. Amen. Praise God. Appreciate that. We um, uh, last Sunday spoke about a pledge and uh, we are entering into this very, very important season of our church life and ministry and all that we're doing with our pioneer churches If you were not here last Sunday and you would like to participate in the pledge or you haven't had an opportunity to do that, the ushers will have these pledge slips and you can just grab one of those. I preached last Sunday morning from Ephesians 3.20 and the Bible says that God, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything we think or ask or imagine. And if you think about the widow who gave two mites Her offering goes way beyond exceedingly and abundantly beyond anything she could have imagined. Years Here we are now, 2,024 years later, we're still talking about it, we're referencing from it. I have no doubt churches were planted because of that scripture, exceedingly abundantly beyond what you could imagine. And I want to encourage you that you might think, well, what what, what does my small offering, uh, what can that do? I'm telling you, it will do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything you think or ask or imagine. God is able to bless you. He's able to uh, use your offering and help our pioneer churches in New Zealand and our local churches. Uh, We support them. We have up to $50,000 a year at this point in time going out in support. Uh, And no doubt that is only going to increase. And all that is done on the back of our tithes and offerings and our pledges. So if you're able to participate, you take one of these slips. Let me explain to you how this works. Very simple. I'm only going to do this a few more times and then we'll have covered the bases. But there's only two places to write on this. It's one here in a red space. That is the amount of money that you can give on top of your tithes uh, each month. And then at the bottom in the blue space is the red amount times six or six months. Okay? So if, for example, you wrote in there $100 times six would be $600 in the blue space. That's it. No percentages, no other things. You don't have to write you know, a prayer request, or what you're hoping for, what you're hoping to get back. Just those two figures and uh, our church council will add that to the list. Then you can begin to honor that. All right, so it includes March right through to September. 
And uh, I've already received testimonies of people who made a pledge, a six-month pledge, and God has already given them the whole six months' worth already. I'm telling you, God will never let you down, and he will do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what you think or ask or imagine. You don't have to fear. You don't have to worry. You don't have to think, man, if I give, oh, what am I, how am I going to live? God is able to move exceedingly and abundantly. So participate in that. Pay your tithes, honor the pledges. You can give into the pledge account. Tithes and offerings go into the offerings account. Pledges into the pledge account. Let God bless you this morning. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray. I wonder if Jade and you pray a blessing on the gift and giver. Appreciate the good music, singers, and song service team. Appreciate your giving, your pledge, your offerings. Amen. Praise God. Ephesians 5, the word of God. Ephesians 5, and we are going to look at a few verses of Scripture, 18 through 21, Ephesians 5. And just thinking through this season of time that we're in as a church right now, we a couple of weeks ago, I, I preached on money, obviously, and spoke about the pledge, and then I preached on ministry and put up ministry form and those who wanted to volunteer to be in ministry, and I see that people are signing up for that. That's tremendous. Um, that's an expression of interest. If you haven't done that already and you'd like to be involved with something, I want to encourage everybody. If you've been saved for a few months, start to contribute, start to be involved. There's many things that you can do, and um, sign up on that list, but very soon in the next week or so, in fact, probably in two weeks' time, uh, it's the Sunday night of the revival with the evangelist Steve Bowman, because his revival is Thursday through Sunday morning, then Sunday night he goes to Parramatta, but that Sunday night I'm going to preach and announce the Bible study leaders and the leaders and assistants, and that's really uh, the only time in the near, in the next few weeks uh, that I have. So that's going to be, I think it's the 14th of April. I'm going to announce that then, preach on it and announce that. But I was just thinking about all of those, uh, thinking about those things, thinking about um, ministry, thinking about leaders, giving, and all of those things to make those things possible. You know what we really need? I mean, I said it when we sang the song, but we really need God. We need to be filled with God's spirit, God's presence, God's power, we need more of God than what we currently have. I was thinking about this. You know, I used to live in the country. When I was 18 years old, my parents divorced and my mum moved us to a very small country town. We lived in the country and sometimes, uh, you know, when you go to fill up the car with petrol, you want to get as much as you can in the petrol tank because you've got to drive far. And sometimes you don't see another person or a petrol station for hundreds of kilometres so what we would often do is go to the petrol station and fill up. You know when you fill up and, the, and it clicks off all right, and your car is full? 
So what, what we would do is rock the car back and forth and let the petrol kind of, I don't even know if it worked, but it was a, it was a, it, it was, we tried it anyway and rock the car so that the petrol settles down in a little bit further and then you get a little more in and a little more in, rock it a bit more and get a little more in and uh, so that you would never run out of petrol. But I was thinking about that. We're trying to fill the tank up as much as it possibly can be filled. I mean, oh, that's not just true of cars. That's true of our lives. That's true of our lives. We need to be full of the Spirit of God and not just full, but full and refilled and as full as possible. In our text, the Apostle Paul, he wants us to understand the need to be full of the Holy Spirit and not just a little but to be filled and to be full and to be overflowing. And he says that should be seen in the expression of the local church and the joy of the saints. So I want to preach a sermon this morning. It's simply called Be Filled. We're going to look at Ephesians 5, 18 through 21. The Bible says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Amen. Let's just bow our heads and pray. Father, we're asking for you to meet with us today. Help us to make room for you in our lives, that we can allow your presence, your power, your spirit, your joy to fill us and fill us to full and overflowing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's look firstly this morning on uh, looking at living on empty, living on empty. I was reading about a man by the name of uh, Nick uh, Vermeulen. He is a wealthy man who collects vomit bags. And so this guy, I mean, he's clearly got no life. That here's a guy who, uh, he, his obsession in life is, is uh, collects vomit bags off aeroplanes. Uh, the article said he has personally collected 6,290 vomit bags traveling on 1,191 different airlines to more than 200 countries. He's obviously wealthy. He's got money. He's traveled to 200 different countries. That takes a lot of money and a lot of resources. You've got to have time. And so here's this guy, 200 countries, collected 6,290 vomit bags, a wealthy guy, got things in life, yet his life is so empty. He's got to collect vomit bags to keep himself amused and focused in life. You know, as people... People try all kinds of weird things to fill themselves up. We try all kinds of things to find some kind of satisfaction in life and we don't get it and we can't find it. Uh, Hence why the Rolling Stones uh, sang a song called No Satisfaction. I can't get no satisfaction. I mean, know the song. But I try and I try and I try. I can't get no. You know how it goes. The problem is many people live like that. It's why people turn to drugs and alcohol and immorality is because they are empty on the inside. There is no peace. You can have money, you can have wealth, you can have family, you can have things, but there's no peace on the inside. There's no contentment. There is no satisfaction and in anything in life because sin will always leave you empty On the inside, sin will always leave you unsatisfied. So people live their lives empty. This can even be true of Christians. You can be saved, forgiven, yet still live empty, unfulfilled, unsatisfied lives, especially when life is lived in the here and now and not for the eternal promises that nothing seems to satisfy. You can't please the flesh continually. You can't please all the people all the time. You can't please the boss always. You can't please your ego. You can't please your pride. You can't please all of your desires. And the result of that is you end up living empty. You see, you can have stuff, 
and still feel empty on the inside. We know that the Bible says in Ecclesiastes uh, that God has written eternity uh, on the hearts of men. But listen, when you reject that, or when you cover that over with other things, it leaves people empty and hurting on the inside. Proverbs 8.36 from the English Standard Version says, but he who fails to find me, that's God, injures himself. All who hate me love death. Or in other words, you end up with an empty heart, no purpose, no drive and no God and you're hurting yourself because an eternity escapes you. Proverbs says if you don't seek God, you're injuring yourself. And that is true in many ways in life, but in the context of this message, You are living an empty, unfulfilled life without God. See, living empty means devoid of purpose. It means devoid of God's purpose in particular. 1 Peter 1.18 from the NIV, it says, For you know that it um, uh, it is not with perishable things, such as silver and gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors. Anyone ever find that to be true of their own lives? That's certainly true of me. That you were redeemed from the empty way of life that was handed down to you by your ancestors. You're saying, there's no fault of your own. Just as through one man, sin entered the world and death spread to all men because all men sinned. That's the ultimate ancestor, Adam. But then from there, down through the generations, parents, under parents, under children, and so on and so on, that we were handed down Empty way of life because that is life without God. Verse 19, with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or perish uh, uh, or, or defect uh, made a way for us to give us something to uh, fulfilling life. Peter says in life has nothing to do with silver and gold. In fact, those things leave you empty. And this may be the way you were raised. This may be the way you thought, well, if I I grow up and I have some things, silver and gold is the reference of our text, you may be raised to think that 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 may be right, but redemption and purpose can only come by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, who came to set you free from the empty way of life. And again, if you were saved as an adult you no doubt have said to yourself at some point in time, if you were saved as a mature person, you would have said to yourself, there's got to be more to life than this. There's got to be more to life than this. Eat, sleep, work, and repeat the cycle. How many know there's got to be more to life than that? Got to be more to life than the rat race, stuck in the wheel, eat, sleep, work, and just repeat the cycle with no purpose. That's why sea change is so popular, or mountain change, or whatever you want to call it. People desperately trying to find satisfaction in circumstances or in situation. Our text provides answers to the emptiness of life. Paul says to the Ephesian church, don't get deceived by the things of this world. Don't get deceived by the things of this world. He says, you know what? Don't get drunk with wine. I mean, there's a a good reason not to drink alcohol. He says, don't get drunk with wine, which which makes you feel good for a moment, but then quickly dissipates or disappears and then leaves you empty again and leaves you on a cycle. Rather, he says, rather than live like that, trying to grasping at empty things, trying to fill your lives with uh, perhaps, you hear in our references, getting drunk on the world, and we understand, so don't, don't get drunk with wine, but the reference is don't get drunk on the world and things and possessions and material things. Paul says, rather than live like that, Paul says, be filled with the Spirit. Fill your life with God. Fill your life with the Spirit of God. Fill your life with God's presence, God's people. Surround yourself with God's Word, preaching, ministry, songs, music. Fill your life because you can never get you can never get enough. But God can fill you and refill you to overflowing. Those things will not leave you empty. 
the being filled and continuing to fill with the Holy Spirit is like, the Bible says, is like a tree planted near a stream of living water. It's tapping into the life source. It's having the energy. It's having the power. It's having purpose and strength and growth. You know, I was thinking about this when I was 17. I bought a car that didn't start. Probably a bad decision. I paid $300 for it and I thought it looked good. Paid $300 for it and it sat in the backyard. I bought the car before I had a license. And so I, in my mind, I'm going to get this fixed up one day and I'm going to drive it and I'm going to look cool in this car. But it sat in the backyard for months and months until I got a license. Then I got a job and I had some money to fix it up and put a battery in it. But as soon as I connected the battery, the power source, it started and I was off. I could now do some things. I could now go somewhere. You know what it's like when you first get your license and a car? It's like, man, freedom. You know, that's what it's like when you get the Holy Ghost, when you get filled with God's Spirit. It's like, man, I just got freedom. I can now do some things. Yeah, you can be saved, but are you filled with the Holy Ghost and the freedom and the liberty to do some things and function in the will of God? Because when that happens, you get the power of the Holy Spirit and you can now do things, you can now go places, you can now have a sense of destiny and purpose for your life. Amen. Let's look secondly at living with more. Living with more. We just, um, uh, Pastor Luke uh, my son, pioneering there in Henderson, New Zealand, uh, we as a church, in fact, just bought them a new vehicle. And uh, they needed a car and didn't have a car. They got 35 young people to get around. They need a little van. And so they bought a little uh, 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 van, a um, hybrid van. Uh, petrol is so expensive in New Zealand. It's like crazy, uh, the price of petrol. So they bought this hybrid van. And uh, when, when he bought it, I said to Luke, make sure that you uh, say to the guy that you clean it up. Um, and, uh, you, know, we, you know, we would often expect you buy a vehicle, it's going to be clean. Well, it's, it wasn't clean. So make sure you clean it, make sure they polish it, make sure they wash it and keep it clean and all of that. And when you pick it up, that it looks good. And so when Luke went to pick it up, uh, he said, okay, so it's washed and it's, it was sort of clean. But the guy said, oh, but wait, there's more. He said, for, um, uh, for a few hundred dollars, you can get a two-year warranty on all um, mechanical things. Okay, that's a good deal. For someone who doesn't have any mechanical ability, that's a good deal. The guy said, but wait, there's more. You can claim back the GST on a purchase. If you're a charity, you can claim back the GST in New Zealand and you can get the GST back. And, or in other words, here he goes to buy a vehicle, and it's like, okay, so here's the vehicle, but there's more, and there's more, and then there's more. And you know, when you trust God in life, there's always more. <laughs> you get so much more than you expected. This is true when it comes to the things of God. You get so much more than you expected when you're saved and you're right with God and you want God's spirit and presence in your life, you get so much more. Yes, you are forgiven of your sins and the truth be known, if God never does another thing for you, you never get healed, you never get blessed, you never get anything, you've already gotten so much. You've already gotten forgiveness of sins and the ability to make heaven as your home. In fact, you've already gotten more than you deserve. But on top of salvation, you get power, you get progress, and you get privilege. Acts 1.8, the Bible says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You shall be a witness to me, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You know, what a, what a privilege it is to be used by God. David said, Psalm 8.4, what is man that God, you are mindful of me or mindful of him and that you would visit him? David is expressing his great gratitude to the fact that when we get saved, the God of heaven looks down upon us and David says, well, who am I that the God of heaven would visit me, speak to me, help me, bless me? And yes, God forgives us, but he also cares about us 
and he wants to visit us and bring us into his eternal promises called heaven. So on top of all of that, you get what's called redemption and lift. That means you get saved and you get promoted. You know how you get promoted? You get lifted out of what the Bible calls the miry clay, the mess. We get promoted into God's blessing and God's favor. We get promoted because God is able to help us break habits, break addictions. He's able to fix our marriages. He's able to restore families. He's able to heal your body. It's redemption and lift. And our text begins with the challenge. If you read the the previous verses, the challenge to walk circumspectly, which means to watch where you're going and avoid anything that may hinder your progress and the more that God has for you. You think about our text, it says uh, um, that you do these things, walk circumspectly, do these things with God's wisdom. Or in other words, God will show you the obstacles. God will show you the things that are in the way of you serving him, things to avoid, things that get in the way. He gives you the wisdom and the power to navigate those things. And he says, if you will live your life with godly wisdom, God is able to give you more and more and more. He is able to redeem time because you don't have much time. We don't have much time. We are living, how many know we're living in the last days? And time is running out. Pastor Mitchell is famous for his quota that time is running out. We don't have forever to preach this gospel. So to help us, God says, I'm able to redeem the time. That means the time that you have lost living as a sinner, living in the world, living without God, God is able to redeem those years. He's able to get it back for you. And the years in salvation can be blessed, can be productive, can be fruitful, can be powerful beyond our imagination. Our text says, be filled with the Spirit. That means be filled and be continually filled. You know why? Because we're leaky vessels. We're leaky vessels. The Spirit of God tends to leak out of us. And, and depart from us, we are leaky vessels and we need to be constantly filled with God's Spirit. You know, you think about, again, the, we, the pledge and ministry and Bible study leaders and assistant leaders, all of those things require more of God's Spirit. If you're going to honor your pledge, you need, God, you need God to help you give you more. You're going to be in ministry. You need God to help you, give you a larger heart for people and to serve and and to have the capacity to continually be giving out. So let's just consider four things that being filled with the Spirit of God looks like. Number one is it looks like a disciplined person. The Bible says not intoxicated with the world, not stumbling over worldly things, but it's people who are waiting on God Trusting God and disciplined in the process. If you're filled with the Spirit, the Bible says there ought to be no room to have the world in you as well. Think about the discipline of Jesus after the resurrection, or Jesus himself plus the disciples. You think about the discipline of the disciples. The Bible says Jesus appeared to over 500 after his resurrection. Then we get to the upper room, and how many were in the upper room? 120. Where were the others? Perhaps only 120 were disciplined enough to get more of God because in that upper room is where God poured out his spirit and he gave them the Holy Spirit and he gave them power. And so if you are going to receive power and be filled with the Holy Spirit, you need to be a disciplined person. That's number one. Number two, you need to be a joyful person. Verse 19 of our text says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. That does not mean that we live out a a, a living musical. That we are, hello, Maka, how are you today? And that we are singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Thus says the Lord, may the Lord bless you. That's not what it's talking about. 
The natural outcome, though, of being filled with the Spirit is that you want to give God praise, that you want to sing, that God puts a song in your heart to the Lord. And some say the songs of Paul, what Paul is referring to, are probably the Psalms and hymns, something like how great thou art. And for all that God has done, saved him, set him free, delivered him up, how great thou art. And spiritual songs about the Christian experience, like the amazing grace of God for our lives. These things were constantly, the Bible says, these three things ought to be constantly in our mouths. If you are filled with the Spirit of God, constantly in our mouths and in our heart, always speaking and singing to one another about the Word of God and how good God is and what God has done. So, it ought to be identified by joyful people, then thirdly, thankful people. Verse 20, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is how being filled with the Spirit is made manifest in believers, you and I that you become so thankful. You become thankful people, so grateful for what God has done. We know the Apostle Paul said, I was the chief of sinners, the worst of the worst, yet God revealed himself to me and saved me and set me free. And now here he is, he's giving great sage biblical advice Word of God saying, you know what, uh, don't worry about the world and the things of the world. That is nothing. What you need is be filled with God and filled with God's Spirit and be grateful and thankful for all that He has done for you. Our text says the Spirit-filled people are thankful people and they show it. Yeah, I mean, no, gratitude needs to have an expression. Gratitude is not just words. It's very easy to say, appreciate you, bro. Very easy to say, Thanks. It's another thing altogether to demonstrate your appreciation and your gratitude. And our scripture says, giving thanks always to all things, to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so grateful people, amen, have an expression of that. They demonstrate that. They show that. They live a life of gratitude towards God and God's people. Our text says, giving thanks always. For all things. And then the fourth thing is our submitted people. Verse 21 says, submitting to one another in the fear of God. It says they are submitted to God and submitted to one another in the fear of God. You know, I've had people say to me over the years, I'm submitted to God, but I don't need anyone telling me what to do. So I don't go to church. My, my reply to them often is, do you not fear God? Because that's not what the Apostle Paul said here as a word from God to the Ephesian church. He said, submit to God and to one another. That is, those that are filled with the Holy Spirit, this is what it looks like. You submit to God and to one another. It's why we're going to have Bible study teams uh, and we're going to put a, nominate a leader at the top of the list uh, and you sign up under that leader's name and under that leader's leadership because the Bible says submit to God and each other. And that leader is available to serve and love and help and bless you. And the Bible says the right thing to do if you want to be filled with God's spirit is submit to God and submit to one another. It's just my observation. Listen, to: if you are not submitted to one another, you will not be submitted to God. You know why? Because you're already not submitted. Let's look thirdly at living being filled. It's a little like trying to get a little more petrol in the car. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like God just rock rock my world and fill me a little more. And I feel that when I come into church, it's like, man, I just need a little. That's why, I I don't know, but I I trust that's kind of why you're here this morning, because you want more of God. You want God to just give, give, a, give you a little shake and make a little more room for him and shift out some of the other stuff and give you a little shake and make a little more room for God in our lives. 
Because people who want God's Spirit, want to be full of the Holy Spirit uh, 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 so much and want all of that, Paul makes the parallel to those who have, he's making the parallel to those who've been drinking wine. Paul says, the ordinary Christian who is filled with God's Spirit gets excited not because of something external, not because of wine or alcohol or some other thing, but a, the Christian who gets excited and is filled with God's Spirit gets excited because they have a well-balanced, prayerful mind. Paul says that the expression of that is don't get drunk on the things of the world, worldly songs, worldly things that you look at and listen to, but get excited about Christian fellowship, about songs of thankfulness. Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Here's Nehemiah having built the wall of Jerusalem. He's held a leadership position. He's done some things. He's made some accomplishments. And he still says that it's, it's nothing and people's applause is not what I'm after. It's God who gives me strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And our text says, be filled with the Spirit. This is what will give you joy and strength. You know, I can remember getting saved personally resistant to the Holy Spirit. Only because of ignorance, naivety, I had no clue. I was raised a Catholic, never went to church. I never understood it. I didn't get it. Full of pride, I can say that now, full of pride and resistant. But listen, the day that I submitted to God and said, God, I don't care, Fill me with your spirit and your presence. Listen, that day I went home and I had a collection of alcohol. That day I went home and I tipped full bottles, unopened bottles down the sink. I threw out old music, old worldly music that I used to listen to. I began to seek God and desire God in prayer and praise and I did it with joy. I was glad, like, they, like David said, I was glad when they said, let us go up to the house of the Lord. I got saved, and, and, and my wife had already been saved for three and a half years before me, but I'm saying to her, hey, are, are we, are we going to go to church next week? She's like, if you want to. I say, like, yeah, let's go. There's something in me that when I began to surrender to the will of God in my life, God came in and began to fill me with his spirit and his presence, and something in me was able to do what God wanted me to do. All of a sudden, I began to be filled with God's Spirit. I was glad, happy to be in church, happy to pray, happy to sing, happy to be in fellowship. You know, evangelist Ernie Toppin, he wrote, um, you know, most of his songs uh, was about being filled with the Spirit and gratitude for Jesus. We had a tremendous revival with him some time ago. Many of you were singing his songs long after he was gone. But can I say this morning as we close, you know, you don't need to write songs or sing on the mic. But there does need to be a song in your heart. And so I want to close with a threefold challenge. Is number one is ask God to fill your spirit today. Ask God, say, God, I need more of your spirit, more of your presence, more of your, in my life, doesn't matter where you're at, say five years, 35 years, five months. You need more of God's spirit. Make that your prayer Number one. Number two, ask God to give you joy and strength. That you need joy. Joy is a key component of the Christian life. It's not just all, uh, you know, battling and battling and building and battling. No, there's a key component of the Christian life is joy. And ask God to put in you a spirit of joy and number three is ask God to put a song in your heart. Uh, amen. Again, this is not a reference to singing on a microphone or singing in public, but just there's something in, in, in you that cannot contain the joy of who God is and what he has done, and therefore you hear a song. You hear a song and you just can't help but sing. And, you know, my song, my song for 2024 is I Trust in God. And uh, we, we heard that song, we practiced, well, I sent that to Missy, I said, Missy, you need to do this song, he did half the song, then we did the full song, and now we're kind of, now we're going to 
almost get the whole song. But this is this is this is my song. You know, you know, you you got to find a song. You know, you can you can put on a song and you can begin to sing it, and all of a sudden you'd go from here to here, and it just lifts your spirit, and you begin to you begin to tell God what you think about that, and you be you begin to go from empty to full. How many want to go from empty to full? You you might not be empty. You might be half full. But you can get full, full. You might be full today. You can get full to overflowing. And I believe God is going to help us. Amen. Let's bow our heads. We close in a word of prayer. Amen. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. And take a moment and pray. I want God to help us. Amen. Appreciate everyone being here today. Appreciate your attentiveness and listening Short 30-minute sermon. I want to bring a challenge to everyone that is here. I want to bring a challenge. I don't know the condition of everyone's heart, but one day you're going to stand before God and you're going to give an account of your life. One day your sins are going to be replayed. One day He's either going to be your judge or He's going to be your Savior. This is perhaps the most important, serious matter of your entire life right here, right now. I want to ask you the question, are you right with God? The Bible tells us that none are righteous, no, not one. Until you come to a place where you meet with God and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. I'm going to put my trust in you from this day on. I've lived a sinful life doing my own thing, going my own way. But today I recognize I have sin in my life. And I want to repent. I wonder how many this morning, that's you. You're not saved. You're not right with God. You need prayer for salvation. That's you. I want you to lift your hand right now where I can see it. Quickly lift it up. Say, yes, that's me. I'm not saved. I'm backslidden. I'm away from God. I need prayer this morning. I need Jesus this morning. I need, I need to stop doing my own things and trust Him. That's the, listen, that is the only way to make heaven as your home. And that is the only way to find blessing in this life. Once again this morning, you're not right with God. You're unsaved. You're backslidden. You want prayer. You just lift your hand. Lift it up right now where I can see your hand. Say, yes, that's me. I'd like prayer this morning. I want prayer for salvation. I need Jesus to come into my life. Amen. I want to speak to Christians today. We're going to open up these altars in a time of prayer. And I want you to pray, come and pray and say, God, I need more of your spirit. I want to be filled and refilled and filled to overflowing that, I, that there is no way for me to contain the joy and the strength and the spirit of God in my life and let it spill out of you. Let it come out in your words. Let it come out in your song. Let it come out in your service. Let it come out in your giving. Let it come out in your generosity. Let it flow out in your fellowship today and every day. Be filled, amen. Let's all stand. Let's stand. These altars are open. I want you to come forward, find a place to pray. Come and pray. Come and make an altar before the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need more of God. We need to be filled. God's spirit, God's presence, God's power. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for your presence this morning. The power of the Holy Spirit to meet with us at this altar. Lord, we want a, a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit presence and your power, God, to equip us. Lord, God, let our lives be filled to overflowing. Let our lives, Lord, uh, Lord, the, the, the be, Lord, overflow. Let it come out in every area of life. The joy of the Lord, the joy of serving God, the joy of service, the joy of kingdom-mindedness, the joy of salvation, Lord, the joy of freedom and liberty. The joy of friendship and fellowship, the joy of being in God's presence.
spirit and presence in your life. Amen. Uh, uh, Firstly, anyone you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, the power of God's spirit in your life. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Amen. You've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, the evidence of speaking in tongues, the power of God. Acts 1a, you shall receive power and the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That's you this morning. You've never received that. You don't have God's spirit. God, no one's ever prayed for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you want that. If that's you, I want you to just come here to the front. I want to pray for you. If there's anybody, quickly just come to the front. Bring a friend. Bring somebody with you. Praise God. Awesome. Praise God. Anybody else, quickly just come to the front. I want um, somebody to come and come and stand here. Leonora, I want you to come together. Amen. Sean, are you in? You're in the, in the line? Got the, you got the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. All right. So, are you come for a refilling of the Holy Spirit? Okay. All right. Praise God. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Anybody else? Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Power. Evidence. Speaking in tongues. All right. If you're here, you're a Bible study leader, come and stand behind one of these guys, girls. Come and help me pray. Everyone else, I want you to stretch out your hands. We're going to pray. We're going to believe God right now. You're going to need, you need to trust God, right? You're going to let God fill you and you're going to speak. All right? Let's do that. Let's pray. Stretch out your hands, church. Let's pray. Father, we pray right now. God, a touch from heaven. The Holy Ghost, God, the anointing power of your grace and your spirit, Lord God. Loose him. Lord, by the blood and fill him, Lord God, I pray. God, we thank you, Lord, the blessing of God. Fill him with power, Lord, the anointing of God. Yes, God, fill her, oh God, we thank you. Your Holy Spirit upon his life right now. God, I pray the power of God. Fill him from head to toe. Robo Shalamako Robo Sandaramai Rebebe Shaya Robo Say, you have to speak. Oh God, we pray this morning and the power of God made manifest, Lord, right now. God, fill him with your spirit and your power. Loose him by the blood of Jesus. We thank you, God. You help him, Lord, to trust in you. Believe God. Fill him with your spirit, your presence. Robo Shalamako Robo Sandaramai. God. Glory to God. Amen. It would seem to me that all of you have uh, uh, God's Spirit touch your life right now. And God's filled you with the Holy Spirit. I want to pray this morning, uh, uh, others here this morning, you have a sense of God's presence, the Holy Spirit in your life, uh, uh, but it needs to flow out of you. Not just, it's not your little cup full. It's, Lord, let my cup runneth over. Right, And this morning, you want your cup to run over. You want that manifestation of the Holy Spirit to flow out into your giving, into your fellowship, into your friendships, into your relation, into your, into your benevolence and, and all that you do. You want that? Come and stand here at the front somewhere. I'm going to pray for you. If you don't want that, then that's okay. Praise God. 
Praise God. I want to pray for all of you. Amen. As, as you would, stand at the front and want God to fill your life and let it overflow into every area of life. And we're going to pray this, this, this morning. And I want to really encourage you to you, you speak to God. And you say, God, I'm, let my life, I don't want to be empty. right? And I don't want to be half full. I don't even want to be full. I want to let your spirit flow out of my life. Let that be your prayer. We pray, speak in tongues, and God is going to refill you and let it flow out of you right now. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you that we come before you. God, your presence and your power fill our congregation, the people of God, not just filled, not even half full, Lord, but to be filled and to be overflowing. Lord, let it flow out in every, every area of our lives, God. Let our cup be overflowing. God, I pray, let it flow out, Lord, in our words, in our love, in our, in our hearts, oh God. Let it flow out into service and hospitality and ministry and availability. God, let your spirit flow out, oh God. God, let your spirit, oh God, be in us. Filled with your spirit, God. Let there be no room for anything else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise and thanks. Glory. Hallelujah. Shout out my Glory to God. Amen. Amen. You know, if you're going to be filled with God's Spirit, you have to make sure that there's, there's nothing contaminating that. There's no, there's no room for the world. There's no room for the world. Worldly music, ungodly things, playlists, your phone. There's no room for that in your life. Because we're filled with God's spirit and God's presence and God's power. Amen. Amen. Let's sing that song one more time. I like that song. All of it.
praise God. Amen. Do appreciate you being here, being in church this morning. And trust God is filling your life. Now go and let it flow out. Some way or another, let it flow out. And let it be a blessing to somebody. Amen. We're going to come back tonight, 5.30 for prayer. 6.30 the service begins. I'm going to preach on, uh, uh, well, I'm going to preach using men's camp as an illustration. And uh, we are going to show the men's camp video and talk a little bit about that tonight. Uh, But have a great day in the Lord. Be blessed. Enjoy fellowship. And let's just bow our heads. And we're going to go in a word of prayer. I'm going to ask uh, Josh to close us off in prayer today. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. Amen.